Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're going to be reading The Phantom Toll Booth by Norton Jester. Now for this video, it is a read aloud, which means I'll read the first chapter of this book in this video, and I'll read the other chapters of this book in other videos in the future. So make sure you stay updated if you want to read the full book. So, yeah. This is also illustrated by Jules Pfeiffer. There is a map in the front. You could pause the video to look at it now. There's a drawing in the front. So there is an appreciation in the front, but I'm not going to be reading that. Okay, chapter one, Milo. There once was a boy named Milo, who didn't know what to do with himself, not just sometimes, but always. When he was in school, he longed to be out, and when he was out, he longed to be in. On the way, he thought about coming home, and coming home, he thought about going. Wherever he was, he wished he were somewhere else, and when he got there, he wondered why he'd bothered. Nothing really interested him, at least of all the things that should have. It seems to me that almost everything is a waste of time, he remarked one day as he walked dejectedly home from school. I can't see the point in learning to solve useless problems, or subtracting turnips from turnips, or knowing where Ethiopia is or how to spell February. And since no one bothered to explain otherwise, he regarded the process of seeking knowledge as the greatest waste of time of all. He and his unhappy thoughts hurried along. For while he was never anxious to be where he was going, he liked to get there as quickly as possible. It seemed a great wonder that the world, which was so large, could somehow feel so small and empty. And worst of all, he continued sadly, there's nothing for me to do, nowhere I'd care to go, and hardly anything worth seeing. He punctuated his last thought with such a deep sigh that a house sparrow singing nearby stopped and rushed home to be with his family. Without stopping or looking up, Milo dashed past the buildings and busy shops that lined the street, and in a few minutes reached home, dashed through the lobby, hopped onto the elevator, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and off again, opened the apartment door, rushed into his room, flopped dejectedly into a chair, and grumbled softly. Another long afternoon. He looked glumly at all the things he owned, the books that were too much trouble to read, the tools he never learned to use, the small electric automobile he hadn't driven in months, or was it years, and the hundreds of other games and toys and bats and balls and bits and pieces scattered around him. And then, to no one, to one side of the room, just next to the phonograph, he you noticed something he had certainly never seen before. Who could have possibly have left an enormous package and such a strange one? For a while it was not quite square, it was definitely not round, and for its size was larger than almost any other big package of smaller dimension than he'd ever seen. The Phantom Tollbooth Attached to one side was a bright blue envelope which said, simply, For Milo, who has plenty of time. Of course, if you've ever gotten a surprise package, you can imagine how puzzled and excited Milo was, and if you've never gotten one, Play close attention, because some day you might. I don't think it's my birthday, he puzzled. And Christmas must be months away, and I haven't been outstandingly good or even good at all. He had to admit this to him, even to himself. Most probably I won't like it anyway, but since I don't know where it came from, I can't possibly send it back. He thought about it for quite a while and opened the envelope just to be polite. One genuine turnpike toll booth, it stated, and then went on. Easily assembled at home, and for use by those who have never traveled in lands beyond. What Beyond what, thought Milo as he continued to read. This package contains the following items. 1. Genuine turnpike tool booth to be erected according to directions. 3. Precautionary signs to be used in a precautionary fashion. Assorted coins for, using, for use in paying tolls. 1. Map up to date and carefully drawn by map master cartographers depicting natural and man-made features, one book of rules and traffic regulations which may not be bent or broken, and smaller letters at the bottom it concluded. 
Results are not guaranteed, but if not perfectly satisfied, your wasted time will be refunded. Following the instructions, which told him to cut here, lift there, and fold back all around, he soon had the toll booth unpacked and set up on its stand. He fitted the windows in place and attached the roof, which extended out on both sides and fastened on the coin box. It was very much like the toll booth he'd seen many times on family trips, except, of course, it was much smaller and purple. What a strange present, he thought to himself. The least they could have done was to send a big, send a highway with it, for it's terribly impractical without one. But since at the time there was nothing else he wanted to play with, he set up three signs. Slow down, approaching toll booth. Please have your fare ready. Have your destination in mind. And slowly unfolded the map. As the announcement stated, it was a beautiful map in many colors, showing principal roads, rivers, and seas, towns and cities, mountains and valleys, intersections and detours, and sites of outstanding interest, both beautiful and historic. The only trouble that was Milo had never heard of any of the places that it indicated, and even the name sounded most peculiar. I don't think there really is such a country, he concluded after studying it closely. Well, it doesn't matter, anyway, as he closed his eyes and poked a finger at the map. Dictionopolis, read Milo slowly when he saw what his finger had chosen. Oh, I might as well go there as anywhere. He walked across the room, dusted the car off carefully. Then taking the map and rule book with him, he hopped in and for the lack of anything better to do, drove slowly up to the toll booth. As he deposited his coin, rolled past the remark wistfully. I do hope this is an interesting game, otherwise the af afternoon will be so terribly dull. And that is the end of chapter one. So, like I said at the start of the video, this is a read aloud because it's a chapter book. We will be reading the next chapter in one of the fu my future videos that's coming out. So, if you want to read the rest of the book, then you can watch the other videos of this book. So I'm going to be reading the back of the book now, but if you don't want to just hear the back of the book, then you should just pause the video and click off of it right now, because I'm just going to be doing A Journey to Lands Beyond For Milo, everything's a bore. When a toll booth mysteriously arrives in his room, he drives through only because he's, not nothing, he's got nothing better to do. But on the other side, things seem different. Milo visits the land of conclusions. You get there by jumping learns about time from a ticking watchdog named Talk, and even embarks on a quest to rescue Rhyme and Reason. Somewhere along the way, Milo realized something astonishing. Life is far from dull. In fact, it's exciting behind his wildest dreams. So, I'll see you guys in the my next video, so goodbye.